Weekly with New 6 Morning Anchor, Justin Warmoth. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmoth. It's been a decades-long fight for first responders dealing with PTSD. The time you're out, there's no wage compensation. But just before Florida's legislative session came to a close, a bill to change that was passed with Orlando Police Officer Jerry Reelan in the chambers. The Florida House salutes you. Thank you, Officer Reelan. Welcome to the Florida House. If anything, the first responders at Parkland carried this thing through uh, to the end because everybody knew then that something had to be done. And while this bill went through, others didn't even go to a vote, including the push to make texting and driving a primary offense. Never been clear to me who is lobbying against this. Good morning and welcome to the weekly. I'm Justin Warmoth. This morning we're talking about the big winners and losers of this year's legislative session. The passage of the school safety bill, of course, grabbing headlines across the country. But there were other big pieces of legislation that went through, including the bill that approves workers compensation wages for first responders diagnosed with PTSD. Since the Pulse nightclub attack, New 6 investigator Mike Holfeld has told the story of Orlando police officer Jerry Reeland and the struggles that he has faced. In a moment, I'm going to sit down with Mike and attorney Jeff Bixler, who's been working to get this through for more than two decades. But first, Mike has reaction following the historic passage of this bill. The Florida House salutes you. 20 months after the Pulse first responder first publicly admitted he was struggling with PTSD. Thank you, Officer Reeland. Welcome to the Florida House. OPD officer Jerry Reeland, with his wife Jessica at his side, was being acknowledged as a hero on the floor of the Florida House. Do you think Parkland helped push this over the top? Oh, I know it did. I know it did. 114 yeas, zero nays, Mr. Speaker. One week after that vote, Reeland was visiting News 6 Studios. She says lawmakers walking the halls of the ill-fated freshman building in Parkland, Florida, changed everything. Even though the victims weren't inside the building any longer, they had to see what first responders see um, after the aftermath of something so horrific. And I think it moved them, and that's why they acted. She also credits News 6 reporting as we follow the journey to change the state's workers' comp law to provide lost wages for first responders diagnosed with PTSD. You were listening when no one else was. It passed unanimously. This was our time to stand and have their back. Jimmy Petronas, Florida's CFO and state fire marshal, made the PTSD issue his top priority when he was appointed in July. But they're there to respond to life's worst challenges that could be thrown your way. In an exclusive interview with News 6, Petronas said the stories we presented put a face to the mental pain first responders endure. You know, uh, I hate that those sacrifices had to take place in order to bring this issue to light. I don't want to see another first responder family going through um, what my family went through. All right, and Mike and Jeff, thank you so much for being here this sure. morning to sure. talk about this. You know, Mike, I want to start with you. You've been covering this bill every step of the way. The passage has not been easy. No, it hasn't. Uh, when I first read, uh, met Jeff, uh, Jessica, Jerry, it was almost a year and a half ago now. It was just a few months after the pulse. And looking into Jerry's eyes, mm -hmm. you could see something was missing. You realized he really was going through an emotional hell. Um, and meeting with Jeff and understanding that this PTSD problem is decades. We've been facing this for decades. Jeff was telling me in the newsroom back to 1997 when an officer faced an issue. And I think what people didn't understand was they internalized this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the law, as it's on the books, before this historic moment, basically said, yeah, we'll, we'll cover the medical, but the time you're out, there's no wage compensation. So these guys were afraid to come forward. I'm talking about men and women that internalized this stuff for years, and unfortunately, as Jeff knows, uh, he'll tell you, a lot of families ripped up, suicide, uh, the people are just never the same, and that's why we got involved and we never let up on this story. We kept the momentum going. Jeff, why did it take so long to get something like this passed? Well, you know, this is an issue, it's a public policy issue that my firm's been very concerned about for literally decades. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we recognize the issue, and, and I think I did mention this to Mike in the, uh, back in the studio, uh, uh, about a couple of really severe incidents in 1997, uh, where we had clear PTSD and no ability to get either medical care uh, or lost wage compensation. Mm -hmm. 
but, but how it all came to pass uh, really was about putting a fine point on the stories, you know, the individuals. It's been like, a partnership. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes, yes. We've, we've put together an effort between the first responders, Jeff's firm, I mean, Jeff gives me the guidance so I understand legally what I'm dealing with. And then we meet these families. And every one, I ask them the same thing. Is it real? Does PTSD really affect you? And you better believe it's real. I had a grown man crying in front of me. I mean, this rips them up because they're thinking about that incident not over a few days, but a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And then the outcome of a partnership, and then you see the bill passage, and you see the standing ovation for Jerry Reelan. You were there, Jeff. Yeah. Talk to me about what that was like. Uh, it was one of the most gratifying moments of a 30-year career, uh, without any question. You know, we've done a lot of great work in individual cases that we feel proud uh, about. Um, but to have uh, an impact of this kind uh, over a whole uh, group of people, and you know, first responders in particular, uh, it, it's just uh, hard to describe what that feels like. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, this is about the individuals, these personal stories. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I uh, in, in working on this issue in the past, I've recognized that legislators really don't want to hear from lawyers. You know, they don't want to hear what I have to say about an issue. They want to hear from the people who are actually affected. Uh, and that's where Mike did such an amazing job of telling stories and getting out there and meeting with individuals, not just the Reelands, but other families too, that uh, had these issues that they were dealing with. And the beautiful thing about teaming up with Jeff, Jessica, and Jerry is that more people came forward. Mm -hmm. And they would call me and say, I have a story too. I'm impacted too. We'd meet at Jeff's office and they'd tell their story. Um, and, you know, this is all too frequent that we see this that, you know, there are some of our very best first responders uh, are just masking issues that they're contending with mm -hmm. uh, because they, you know, there's a stigma associated with these types of mental or nervous uh, conditions. They're concerned they won't be able to continue in their career. Uh, that they'll be ostracized and, and singled out. So, you know, if, if anything, I think that may be the most significant part about this legislation, is that it's finally recognizing that this is an occupational disease or illness uh, for first responders, and it's going to encourage employers to get more active, more, you know, more frequently mm -hmm. and earlier in the process so that the condition doesn't become disabling. Last year was close to passage. It was, you know, you guys were at the forefront of this again, but it didn't right. go through. What has changed in the last year to make that go through? That really is such a great question because, you know, we knew we had something with the real in case. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jerry and Jessica came to my office, I, I literally told them that day that their case could change the law in Florida because I believed it. I mean, we had the Pulse tragedy, um, and we had the guy who was in there for four hours cleaning up the bodies and not getting the help he needed. Mm. And so that really spoke to me. I said, well, if, if I've been waiting for the right case to change this law because nobody will listen, this is it. And then I would have to say, with about two weeks left in the session, we were being told it was dead, mm -hmm. uh, that this was not going to get through this year. Uh, and then we had the Parkland tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I think, if anything, the first responders at Parkland carried this thing through uh, to the end because everybody knew then that something had to be done. And that bill was just one of many items passed during this year's legislative session. Coming up, News 6 political expert Jim Clark joins the weekly to break down the big winners and losers. Keep it here.